nature versus nurture. And I'm going to try to convince you of my point of view, which is that neither nature or nurture are the sole, solely used, um, that they both have an impact. Uh, okay, so I want you to think about the best person you know, whether that be because they're the kindest or the most talented or whatever your definition of that is. Um, I'm sure everyone has somebody in mind right now. And um, I want you to think about where those traits came from. Was that because they are born of them or was it something that they grew to have? Um, whether someone is extraordinarily good, extraordinarily evil, or somewhere in the middle, um, it's fascinating to think about where those traits came from. Um, it's, they could be born with it, they could develop it over time, or it could just be somewhere in the middle. Um, these questions lead into a very widely debated topic that's more commonly known as nature versus nurture. I'm going to now explain to you what nature versus nurture is. By definition, nature versus nurture is trying to figure out whether someone genetically has something or whether it's something that they grow to have. Um, it's about whether the influence of heredity or environment is stronger. Um, some people think that these qualities are solely because of genetics. Some people think that they're solely because of how they're brought up. The majority of people, however, think that these both play a part. Um, okay, so now let me dive a little bit deeper into the breakdown of nature. Nature, in this case, means genetics. It means that no matter what, the environment that you grow up in has no impact in who you are um, by the most extreme sense. Um, it's kind of saying that it's inevitable who you'll become, that it can play no, no role. Um, and it's saying that how you act or think um, is just embedded into you as a person. Um, that's kind of to the extreme sense, but most people think that it's more of a combination, as I do. Now I'm going to go into more about nurture. Nurture is the opposite. It's saying that your genetic makeup has nothing to do with who you are. Um, it has nothing to do with your personality, your likes or dislikes, your intelligence, nothing like that. Um, the idea of nature is these traits are learned based on your environment, how you're brought up, who your parents are, who your family is, where you grew up, whether it's in the city, in the country, however. Um, and it's not saying that your traits cannot be inherited, but it's more saying that it's inherited because of how you've been taught. Um, I'm now going to give you an example of this. Take political beliefs. Most people, I think, end up thinking very similarly to their parents. I know that my political beliefs are very similar to what my parents believe and how I was taught. Um, and nature versus nurture can only be <coughs> two different ways of this, though. Nature says that I think the same way as my parents think because that it's embedded into both of our genetic makeups. It's because I'm their child. And it's you know, my siblings think similarly because we're all, you know, we are all from the same family. Nurture, however, think, says that because we, we grew up together because that's what they taught me is the reason why I believe the same thing as them. Okay, so I'm now going to um, talk about the red flags. Um, these ideas can raise a lot of red flags. One reason being because it's such a, um, a difficult concept to understand or to come up with a solution. There's lots of gray lines. Um, the main one to talk about is siblings because that is probably the easiest way to debate this topic. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand why some siblings can turn out so differently. Well, um, you know, one sibling can go on to you know, win a Pulitzer, while their, you know, sister could end up in jail, <laughs> you know, be so different. Um, and I think that if you try to use nature versus nurture to make sense of that, whether it be 
because you know you're born with it or however. Um, and this can really show the gray line. Um, another example that can cause red flags is not just siblings but twins. Identical twins are supposed to have the exact same genetic makeup by definition, um, so they should be exactly the same. But it's hard to, you know, it's hard to see how one twin could be so, so different than another, as we've all realized. Um, and one thing that has, has been extensively studied is twins who were separated at birth. Um, this kind of seems like something that would never happen, but it actually has happened quite a lot, and it's been extensively studied. Um, it's mostly by children that have been adopted from a foreign country, and then they're split up, and they don't know that they have a twin. And this has happened, and then they've gone on later in life to realize that they have a twin, and they've been reunited. And it's very, very interesting to see how similar and different they are, because they grew up in completely different ways. Um, you've gone on to see that some twins can have the same, they can like their coffee the same way, or like the same type of music or food, but they can also be very different, and I think that this supports the idea that there is such a gray line between the two that there are nature and nurture both play a part. Um, so in conclusion, I think that both nature and nurture have a role in the way in which a person is made up, and it's impossible to say that one of way of these is the right way because there are so intertwined. Um, thank you, and I hope that I've convinced you uh, that there neither one is the right.